One of the unique features of this book is the ability for you, the reader, to interact with the Python environment as you are reading the text. In fact, there are two different ways that this can be done, and you'll see these occur over and over again as you proceed. The first way that you can interact with Python is through what is called active code. The active code interpreter is an interpreter or a program window that is built into the web environment such that we can have Python programs that will execute directly from the web browser. You can see here is an example of a very small program right in the book itself, just two print statements, but when I click the run button you can see that the output occurs. My first program adds the numbers 2 and 3, the value of 2 plus 3 is 5, and not only is this executing this program, but it also provides me with the ability to modify. This is an editable window. And so I can come up here and simply say, I don't want it to be 2 plus 3, I want it to be 2 plus 15. And now when I run the program, you can see that the result that gets printed is 17. Or if I decide that I want to change one of these words, this program subtracts two numbers, 2 and 3. And we could then change this to be 2 minus 3. And now when I run the program, I get negative 1. So we can make these changes, but as we make changes and modifications, it helps us to experiment with what we're reading about. It helps us to try new things, because we always know that we can come back and simply reload the page, and we'll be right back where we started again. So the reload button will put us back to the point that we were when we loaded the book for the first time. Any changes that you made are simply gone. But it doesn't have to be that way. You'll notice there are a couple of other buttons here, save and load. If I choose to make some changes, so for example, let's say that we want to change this to be my first program adds three numbers. And we'll do two and three and five. And then here I'll say print two plus three plus five. Now if I run this program, of course, it does what you would expect. It adds the numbers together. It changed the text that was going to be printed. But now if I click the Save button, what I've done is I've saved this particular version, the last changes that I made, so that I can reload them at a later time. Let's see how this works. If I reload the page itself, now you can see that I've gone back to what I had originally. But now if I click the Load button, there's the last change that I saved. Now, this save load feature does not allow me to save multiple versions. There is no naming of files. There is no having to open a particular version. It simply saves what you had in the window and lets you reload what you recently saved. It's a very nice feature if you're doing some experimenting and you want to keep something for a short amount of time, go back to the original and then perhaps come back to the changes that you made. The second way that we can interact with Python is through a tool called a visualizer and we call this tool CodeLens. CodeLens allows you as the reader to step through the program statement by statement and be in complete control of how the program executes. So again, here is a code lens window, and you can see that there are two statements in this program, basically two prints, the same ones we had before. And there are some control buttons, and the first one says forward. And if I click on that, you'll notice that what's going to happen is it's going to execute the statement that's currently highlighted in yellow. The way that code lens works is that it maintains the current location in the execution sequence that's always highlighted by yellow. Whenever you click the forward button, that statement will be executed and the next statement that it's getting ready to perform will now be highlighted. So when I click forward, watch what happens. This statement is no longer yellow, but now the next one is, but if we look down below, we can see that the execution of the print statement has occurred. The program output is that we're gonna add two numbers together. If I do forward again, we'll see that we get more output. 
Now this can be a very, very useful feature for you because as you're running a program, for example in the active code environment, you only see the program execute in terms of what you get at the end. But now you have the ability to control it step by step as you go from beginning to end. And furthermore, watch what we can do. We can actually go backwards. We can undo step by step. So we can go forward step by step or backward. And if we want to, we can go all the way to the end or all the way back to the beginning. Now notice that there's a section here called variables and nothing has really been happening there. One of the other features that CodeLens will allow us to, to, to take advantage of is as we create data, as we build new data objects in our programs, we'll be able to see those data objects appear within the CodeLens screen. Just to see that, let's go to another section of the text and let's find a code lens window. Here's one. Now we're not going to understand necessarily the Python here, but you're going to see what's happening. Notice here is the highlighted line. When I click forward, it says there is now a variable that's been created. It's called message. And if I click forward again, there's another variable. And if I click forward again, there's another variable. And then when I click forward again, the print occurs and I see some output. If you don't understand what a variable is, if you don't understand what's happening here in terms of assignment statements, that's okay. That will come later on. What I wanted to show you was the power of the code lens tool. You'll find this to be a great advantage to you, being able to both go forward and backward. Notice as I go forward, I build up the data. As I go backward, the data is removed. I have complete control over the program execution in both directions. I think you'll find that both of these tools will be extremely useful to you as you're learning Python. However, one thing that we should mention is that in the CodeLens tool, there is no ability to edit. And so you simply can execute what's there but you can't make modifications. With respect to active code, you can make modifications, but there are limitations. You should simply know that not all of the standard Python modules have been implemented in the active code environment. And so although everything works in terms of what we want to accomplish in the text, if you're trying to use other modules that exist in standard Python, you might find that they will not run within the active code window but more than likely, by that time, you'll be running in a more general development environment anyway.